Hello, hey, Larry Kirkpatrick here for Horizon Watch. On November 20, 2023, the Church of England meeting in Synod voted to approve blessings on same-sex unions. As the BBC reported, quote, gay couples will be able to have special services of blessing in Church of England parishes for the first time. The services, while not formal weddings, will be able to include the wearing of rings, prayers, confetti, and a blessing from the priest, unquote. After decisions reached at this meeting, same-sex blessings could begin as early as 2024. Now, the Bible teaches that marriage is between a biological male and a biological female person. Look at Genesis 2, verses 18 to 25. The Church of England says that it agrees with the Bible, and yet the new practices and blessings being developed contradict that. William Pearson G. is one example of a clergy person speaking pointedly in debate in the Church of England at the Synod over the motion. Here are some excerpts from his remarks. It pains me that I stand before you to challenge 44 of our bishops who all swore an oath to uphold the teaching of the church, but are now leading their flocks, brought with the blood of Christ, astray with them. We are being walked towards a cliff edge. We know it's not really about same-sex marriage. It's instead about the authority of scripture. I've been told by a fellow Synod member that when I teach the biblical view of marriage, I should be prosecuted for hate speech. I submit that this is loving, well-intentioned sophistry. We all know that blessings will be dressed up to be as pretty much indistinguishable from marriage. And we know what the trajectory is. The 44 bishops who signed their letter have been clear on that. We all know that blessings are but the first step, and like getting your foot in the door, once authorized under B5A, there will be no turning back. Bishops swear to uphold the teaching of the church, but the 44 and our archbishops have failed. You are not even united on the basic issue of sex before marriage. Here am I encouraging my children to remain celibate until marriage, and you can't even agree on whether I should be teaching them this. Or, like the Bishop of Dover said, all our kids are doing it, so it's fine. Get over it. You have compromised with the world. The church is a lifeboat. It should be in the sea, but when the sea gets into the lifeboat, we are in trouble, and you have opened the stopcocks. Instead of allowing the gospel to conform us, you are allowing the world to conform the gospel. You are leading the Church of England over a cliff, which is why we cannot walk together. Archbishop Justin Welby and others described the Living in Love and Faith initiative pursued by the Church of England, which has been underway for the past six years. Here's some excerpts from their video. Over the last six years, the Church of England has been traveling together through our Living in Love and Faith process. As we consider questions around identity, sexuality, relationships, and marriage. One of the key questions on this journey concerns same-sex relationships and marriage. We're united in our desire to nurture a church where everyone is welcomed, accepted, and affirmed in a 21st century church. We are deeply sorry and ashamed for when we have failed to do so, causing pain, exclusion and rejection of LGBTI plus people. With joy, we cherish and value LGBTI plus people and we welcome unreservedly and joyfully same-sex couples in our churches. We shall create new prayers and a service which can be used in our churches, which affirm and celebrate same-sex couples who have entered into civil partnership or marriage, as well as other significant relationships. Meanwhile, more than 70 million of the world's 90 million adherents to Anglicanism reject the idea of same-sex unions being blessed by the church. GAFCON released a statement on November 10, 2023, including the following words, and I quote, We have witnessed over the past 25 years the slow but relentless moral decay in parts of the Anglican Communion where the world's values have been endorsed and embraced, replacing the clear teaching of God's Word written. And they went on to say, We encourage GAFCON provinces to consider withdrawing all links with any English diocese whose bishop supports the proposals currently before the General Synod 
to sanction the blessing of same-sex couples. Now, that statement was released November 10, and Synod occurred a few days after that. God, in his mercy, meets us where we are, and yet he does not leave us there. No Christian opposes being kind to persons engaging in practices that we disagree with. No Christian wants to prevent an LGBTI plus person from, from hearing God's word. And this report here, this video report you're watching, it's not about passing any moral evaluation on unconverted persons engaging in same-sex behavior. But the Church of England is a, another matter. Her leaders are without excuse. In the Bible, the church is described as being the pillar and ground of the truth, 1 Timothy 3.15. Truth is to go out from the church into the world, but, but what can we say when instead the practices of the world wash into the church and replace God's truth? What can we say then? Is William Pearson G. right that regardless of the intention, the acceptance of this practice by the church is sophistry? If the church will not lead morally, then it will follow morally. And if it follows morally, then its members will follow morally. And then it becomes unfaithful to Jesus and incapable of transmitting the gospel into the world. Then it fails in, in its mission. The church itself has become a sign of the times. No limit is evident on what can be cast aside when the Bible comes into conflict with culture. Uh, where's the limits? God in his word sometimes condemns a practice, but when we turn around and it's it's somehow a, a current moral imperative, then we see the church uh, finding a place for it. That's called compromise. That is compromise. It's not about truth. That's about cultural inwashing and overwashing and having the culture overwash the church. And this particular business about same-sex relations it constitutes an attack on God's creation order itself. It is a, a remaking of Genesis 1 over in an image completely contradictory to that image as God outlines it in Genesis 1, verse 27. The practice changes creation-ordered roles and norms. Friends, this is one of the corruptions which have been entering the various organizations which have departed from biblical teaching over the past 200 years. I don't know what else to call it. May God meet Christians on the pathway. May he, may he help them change course and go back to the word, the word of truth, and find their way back home into God's capable and loving hands. Hey, if you've benefited from this item, let me just invite you. You're welcome to go ahead and uh, get the uh, URL here off of the QR code and subscribe to the Horizon Watch newsletter. We're going to come out at least once a month and hopefully more than once a month uh, with current stories, short one-item stories where we deal with things pertaining to those three pieces in Revelation 18, the, the political powers, the mercantile or corporation powers, and then the Babylon powers. We're going to take those three areas and things that pertain to Bible prophecy, which which are coming true right before our own eyeballs in our own time, things that are very current, they're all going to be dated you know, like exactly when they come from, like you'll see in the footnotes here at the end here. We're going to document it, and you'll have something that will show you something, what's current, currently happening. And we'll try to be a bulwark against some of these wrong things and, and a beacon of warning. So subscribe to our Horizon Watch newsletter, and uh, you can just get that. It's free. Just You can download it, and you'll have your new uh, list of stories. God bless you, and God take care of you.